But let's get started. So we're, this month we're talking about mindset, and um, so many things affect that. And you all probably already know this story if you've been here long enough, but in, in 2008 I went to a real estate seminar and met a man named Greg Herter, and he introduced me to a gentleman named Jim Rohn. And Jim Rome is a business <coughs> philosopher, international consultant, sharing a couple of ideas of his and philosophies today. Um, and some of these come from one of my favorite books. This is one of the first books I read after I left that seminar called Hard Optimism, How to Succeed in a World Where Positive Wins. Notice the glass, the glass is half full, but it's not the bottom half like you traditionally think. Anyway. Um, it made me think of this, this question and this thought is the most important piece of equipment we have to work with is it's not the iWatch, it's not the iPhone, it's not our electric car, it's, you know, it's our mind, it's our brain. And we now live in a knowledge economy. Everything is based on what we know how we respond, performance is based on that, how we process things, uh, how we use our brain. For years, most jobs were, were primarily physical. It's your physical strength, your physical ability to get things done. But today's knowledge economy, it's, it's how we think about things and process it and how we allow it to affect us. That's why so many companies are spending billions of dollars on artificial intelligence. They know that it's about how we think, how we process. And the mind is our main productivity tool. And so thinking is such a core and key competency to what we do that our thought process is really one of the most important factors that influence and determine our, our performance. Um, now how we how we frame things about how we feel, how we process, you know, that determines so much. So when we think about that and mindset, is can, we have to ask, can people change? Can we change our mindset? Can we change the way we think about things? And, you know, change is loyal to no one. Things have changed so quickly in the past just in the past 10 months, you know, and really the last five years, that so many things have started changing around, especially in this industry, that we have to change how we approach some of those things. You know, do we need to focus on it? Do we need to worry about it? Should we be concerned? Well, you can't change what's happening around us. All we can change is, is our own personal philosophy and how we decide to react to all those things that are changing around us. And there are lots of different principles or ways to work on your philosophy. I just picked out four that I thought were ones that were simple enough that anyone could implement them in a day. You walk out of this meeting, you could probably start working on one of these if you wanted to. Because a philosophy is the major determining factor in how our life works out. And you have to understand the importance of developing a personal philosophy and how you allow things to affect you. And you need to look for those things and how they affect you because there's some things you probably need to spend less time doing and spend more time focusing on. So we're going to talk about how to set your sail, learning from success and failure, reading all you can, and the last one is observing and listening. Um, that's something I don't do very well. It's so hard to just observe and listen when so much around us is happening. But it's important. That didn't change, did it? Okay. So setting your sail. Y'all are in it every day. There's hustle and bustle and the daily grind and there's stuff happening all the time. And in our business life, in our personal life, uh, there's so many different circumstances and obstacles that we face and challenges on a daily basis, a weekly basis, monthly basis. The great challenge is how, is how you react to the things that are happening around you and how you respond. You know, 
the major difference isn't the circumstances, it's the set of the sail. You can all set your sail, but when the wind changes, you've got to change the set of your sail, or it's going to send you in another direction. And that's the major difference. We all have the same circumstances. You know, whether you voted for the current administration in a local government or a state government or the federal government, that's who our president is, that's who our governor is, that's who our mayor is. And if you've got to think about what you're going to do differently or how you're going to reset your direction based on those circumstances, because it affects everybody. And this is hard. You've got, you've got to do all these things at least once a year. You've got to learn from your success and failure. And I know if you are going through with Julie, um, it's not the business planning, but it's the review. Reviewing. You've got to take inventory of, of what you've done the last year. What decisions did you make in your business? What outcomes did those generate? You've got to take inventory of your personal decisions. Those affect us a lot too, you know, more than we realize. You need to take time to study people who do things well, and then look around who's affecting you. Who are your influences? Who are your influencers? If you don't do this at least once a year, you can't possibly understand how that's going to affect you five years from now. Because if you've been doing things the wrong way for five years, I would suggest that's probably long enough. You could probably take a break from doing that. Um, one of my favorite quotes is, and you, you talk to people like, God, you know, man, I'm just, I'm just going broke. I can't make any money. Were you working on it? Yeah, seven days a week. Maybe you should try six. Take a day off. You know, if you're going broke seven days a week, <laughs> I mean, why go broke one more day? Take a day off. Take a break. It's not working. You got, you got to take time to think about what is and what's not. Because failure is not a single cataclysmic event. You don't fail overnight. Failure is a few errors in judgment, practice every day. So if you don't take time to evaluate what's not working, then you may not realize that that's going on for too long and that you need to make some changes. Because average people look for ways to get away with it. Successful people look for ways of getting on with it. And we have to have, and we need a variety of input from other people. You can't learn everything you need to know about life and business just from one person. You can't get all the answers. So you gotta study what other people are doing, and you gotta see how people around you are influencing you. Because every, everyone experiences failure and success. You know, the quote from Winston Churchill, um, most people talk about those figures and all the successes they have. But do you imagine the failures someone experienced in a position like that, fighting a world war? I mean, it, it, probably failures every day. It took me a while to, fit, to understand this too, but I mean, everything you really need to know has probably already been written. And if it hasn't, someone's writing it right now. There's not a lot of really... No one comes out with a book titled The New Fundamentals to Life, right? The fundamentals are always the same. So read all you can. There are incredible people who have had amazing experiences, and it may have taken them 10 or 20 years to have those experiences. But guess what? They put them in a book. You can read that in 30, 60, or 90 days. You don't have to spend 20 years trying to figure things out. That's one of the reasons things change so quickly now is because all the information you need is out there. But it's finding the right information. It, I read this book again last night. And I'm an incredibly slow reader. I cannot finish a book in less than three months. I don't know what my problem is. Um, but I love this book because not a single page is full of text. <laughs> I can read five pages in like a minute. And then guess what? They have pictures. Two pa Only on two pages it says, The door to hell is locked from the inside. Kurt Vonnegut. Thanks. New idea. 
Now, this is one of the easiest books I've ever read, and I read it once a year, just because it's still got a bunch of great information. But you know what the only thing worse than not reading a book every 90 days is? Anybody know what's worse than that? Not reading a book every 90 days and think that it doesn't affect you or that it doesn't matter. You know, that's the worst thing. Because it does. You can learn so much. Some people read, you know, the trashy novel at the beach. That's great too. You've got to have all kind of outlets. But if you want to focus on some things, you've got to pick up some books that can help you too. And observe and listen. You know, one of the major reasons that people don't do well is because they keep trying to get through the day instead of getting from it. You know, God, I wish, I wish Friday was here. Or, you know, God, I wish the weekend was here. Some people take a different approach. They want to get as much out of the day as they possibly can. So you've got to pay attention. You've got to surround yourself with people that you admire and respect. And what I've noticed is some people have selective listening. Um, I don't know if that's when you get to a certain age or they're just not interested or the battery in the hearing aid is not working or they just tune out completely. But some things you've got to learn how to tune out because they can have a negative impact on you as well. They can influence you. So you've got to pay attention to what's around you. Now there are lots of benefits, but I picked out just a couple. Your mind is your most important and powerful tool. So you've got to use it to learn how to process ideas. You've got to process all the things that are happening around you in this business, personally, so that you can move on, you can identify what's important. And that your personal philosophy is the major fact that determines how your life works out. That's how you approach things. Now, we don't all have to have the same philosophy, but you gotta work on a philosophy for yourself that's gonna help you accomplish whatever you wanna accomplish. Everybody has different goals. The only right goals are the ones that you want to achieve for yourself. It doesn't matter what someone else thinks you should be achieving, but having a philosophy about what you want to do. And, you know, everything that happens to us happens to us all. It's not always the circumstances. That's the same for a lot of people. There may be some extenuating circumstances that are, that are different and personal, but for the most part, the same thing we're experiencing is happening to everybody else. People just respond to it differently. And did anybody fly, is, gonna, is anybody gonna fly south for the winter this year? Am I going to Miami for the winter? Boca, Bahamas? No? Well, you're not a goose. Gooses have to fly south for the winter. You can go to the west coast, you can go to the east coast, you can go north. You can change your direction, you can reset your sail. You can go anywhere you wanna go. You don't have to fly south. And a lot, of, a lot of this is hard because anytime you change, there's always a price. There's a price you have to pay. And it's hard to pay the price to spend an extra hour a night reading a book or 30 minutes a day going to a Bible study or a couple hours a week working on a presentation it's hard to pay the price if you don't see the promise. You know, if someone came in and said, I guarantee if you spend 10 hours a week doing this, you will make a million dollars. And here's a certificate that if you do that and it doesn't happen, I will give you a million dollars. You say, heck yeah, I'll, well, when, I'll start right now. The promise isn't always clear. But with change happening around us all the time, if you resist change, you'll never change. And you'll just remain stagnant and you'll always have what you've got because you'll be doing more of the same. But the good news is, is you can control your own destiny. You can make your own decisions if you want to have something different, if you want to have more than what you have now. And the hard part about it is that you have to take action. You have to grow. That's tough because 
that takes a commitment. You have to pay a price. You have to give up something if you want to grow in another area. You at least feel like you have to give up something because you don't have time for some of this. So you have to make a commitment. So when you start working on your goal setting for 2018, don't think just about business. Think about if you want to work on your philosophy and something that you want to change, how would you have time to do that and what would you need to do to start building towards that goal? And this is another part of the promise. You can have more than you've got because you can become more than you are. But if you stay where you are, you always have what you've got. And y'all, it's a harsh reality, but change really is not loyal to anybody. But how you process change that's happening in our business, in your personal life, in the world, that's what you can control. And it'll help you understand that some of that change really is, I mean, it's not going to affect you. We, there's some things we just can't do anything about. You can only change how you allow it to affect you and what you do with that information and how you use it. And working on your personal philosophy is the only way I know how to do that because I don't have a billion dollars to fight Zillow. I'm not going to run for president of the United States yet and change policy. I'm not going to run for mayor. Um, I'm not going to run for city council. There's just stuff that is happening to all of us that we can't change, but you can change how you allow it to affect you. And so you, it's hard to do that if you don't have a plan or you don't start designing your own personal philosophy. It doesn't have to be anything grand. It's just a couple of simple things, really. And these are all things we could do right now. Review what we've done, think about what we want to do, and decide how we can learn how to do better if we want to. So as you're going through your business goals, carve out just a little time for yourself to, to work on yourself. That's the best investment you could ever spend time working on is working harder on yourself than you do on your job. Because if you work hard on yourself, there's nothing you won't be able to accomplish. Because the markets are going to change, inventory's low, we'll get to a point where there's too much inventory at some point probably again, or you know, rates are going up, they're going to be raising rates you know, a lot. It's still not much, still less than 5%. So you've got to work on yourself and that's going to allow you to help people do other things, to help you do your job. Uh, so think about your personal philosophy as one of the things you want to work on in 2018. And we're here to help you with anything that we can, achieve your business goals, your personal goals. Um, and we appreciate you making time to be here today with us. Thank you. Mm -hmm.